Hey there folks, here we are again. Uh, so the adventure today is this old Hornby J83. Uh, this was sent to me by Paul along with the Class 24 about 25 in my last video. Uh, and he said that the motor on this runs but the rods are binding. Um, I think he replaced the rods as there was a pin missing in the originals. Uh, so let's turn on the power. It's making a buzzing noise. Oh. Well, it's trying to go, but not quite managing it, and the uh, polarity's wrong. Uh, so the magnet's been put it upside down, I think. Um, well, let's get this into the shed, into the bench, and we'll see what's what. And we'll bring the weight in for this one. Come on, you can do it. Okie dokie then, a little Hornby J83. Uh, this is the old one. Um, I've got a later one with the uh, slightly more detailed body and it's got a Type 7 motor in it. Um, whereas this appears to have, it's peering under the hood there, appears to have an X04 motor. Blimey, okay. And we've got a screw in the side. But, still a nice little model. Um, so I think what I'm going to do first is get the motor out of this and See if we can see if there's a problem with the, the rods binding. We'll hopefully try and get the, the wheels to move freely. So, screw in the side. There we go. And then they call the clip-on nonsense. That just comes off as simple as that. So there we go, an XO4 motor. Uh, the condition looks okay. Yeah. Just needs a good cleaning and oil. So we'll get it out. Let's just undo the brush clip. The brushes will fall out. Get them a clean. And then that should lift out. Uh, yeah, we'll sort that. There's a bit on the stiff side. Let's just get the track. Okay. So it's hard to say whether they're actually binding as such or if it's just the axles are all gunked up. We'll undo the crank pins. Take these rods off. And see if it is the rods that's causing the slight binding or if it's just the axles. Yeah, I think the axles are just gunked up. Uh, right, oh, we'll take this pickup plate off. Most of it's all connected up to that annoyingly. Try and just work around it. So, what's the wheel spacing? 13.7, 13.5. That may seem a bit close, but actually, with these older wheels, um, that's actually fine. You need a bit of a, a bit of movement on the track to. Uh, get around the corners and stuff. Hopefully the faithful contact cleaner will free these up. Yeah, this one's uh, not playing ball. Hard gunk cake around it. Yeah, I think I'm going to pull this wheel. Um, I just think there's fluff and God knows what else got caught up in there. So I think the best thing to do is to pull it. If I can pull it. Oof. That's well and truly stuck on. I mean it's a plastic bushing, it should just come off. Let's try a bigger screwdriver. There we go. 
Unfortunately, the plastic bush is still there. Right. Okay. Let's pull this out. Gunk. So yeah, a little gunk in there, but that's it out. Tighten little bits of wire and all sorts of stuff caught up in the wheel. Okay, I'm going to take the rotary tool to this axle because there's black stuff just caked on it. Right, that's better. Let's clean that up. So that's all through there. Just everything lined up on this side. And then on this side, it's all done there. Put the bushing into that wheel. Push that in. Take that off again just now, and then we'll squeeze these wheels together in my vise. Yeah, well, that's better. Get some oil in it. Let's just put this uh, pickup plate back on. I'll bend these pickups out a wee bit so we know they're making good contact. Okay, a bit of oil on these pins. Okay, pop this back on the track. That's better. That's the chassis sorted. Let's have a look at the motor. Um, I'll need to put these brushes in some cleaner. I think I'm going to put these brushes in my metal cleaner. Stick them in here for an hour. What else can I put in? A clip. We shall get this magnet out. Right. No. Okay, that's good. There's no daylight at the top or bottom of the magnet. I think I mentioned before about uh, looking out for daylight between the magnet and the plates of the motor. You don't want that, but we're okay this time, I think. I'm going to take this bearing out because it's all fluff. Yeah. Just checking for any movement in the motor. It's a wee bit back and forth, but I'm not feeling any side to side or up or down movement, so that's quite good. Um, right, we shall clean the commutator. And there's crap in the slots in this as well. Okay, okay, we'll scoosh that out. Yep, that's north, that's south. So you want the south pole of the magnet to be at the top of the motor. Okay, so I want the north pole of the motor to be facing that way. And we'll give this a couple of blasts. One, two. And that should now be well and truly magnetised. Every time I use this remagnetizer, someone always makes a comment asking, where can they get one, how much does it cost? Um, I'll put a link in the description below to Ronald Dodd's video. Um, basically, you have to contact him and ask him to make you one. Um, I'm not sure how much he's charging for them these days, but this one cost me about £120. Okie dokie, we'll get this lubricated up. We'll get some oil on the thrust bearing just in front of the commutator. Just in the back of it as well. I want to get oil just behind the one gear with another thrust bearing. 
and then saturate this felt oil reserve. Okay, so that's all lubricated up. Um, but I've got some things soaking in my metal cleaner, so that'll, that'll take an hour or two to, to clean up. So I think I'm going to go and get a cup of tea. Okay, so all my bits and bobs are clean. Um, we'll get this bolt put back through. Put the insulator on. Get the brushes. And then we'll put the motor back in. This is where my little brass screwdriver comes into its own. I can screw this little screw in without getting the screwdriver snapped by the magnet. Right, okay, and then we have to fit this into here, which is always a bit of a fiddle. That's that. Okay, right, battery test. Seems fine. Get some grease on the worm gear. We'll work that in. Okay, so I've uh, done some fiddling around off camera because um, although it looked as if it was running okay in the test track there, um, I very quickly just put it on the layout to, to see how it would run there and it was lurching. Um, and then when I put it back on the test track, yeah, I could see it's not as evident on the test track, but it's cer it was certainly lurching. I have spent quite a bit of time fiddling around with this because I couldn't see why it was lurching. Um, I checked the quartering, I checked the quartering again, um, I checked wheel spacing, I checked there was, uh, you know, the, the centre wheels weren't too far in and causing tension on the rods and, and all sorts of stuff, but it would still lurch. I loosened the middle crank pins and that stopped it lurching, so it was fine. Uh, but obviously the pins are going to fall out. Uh, so I thought, well, why? So... I ended up reaming the holes of the rods a bit. Um, there's a rod here. So what I did was, uh, where is it? Took a file and reamed these holes a bit just to make them a little bit larger, thinking that might just solve the problem. But no, it didn't. Um, these are Paul's original rods. Um, and also there's a pin missing, so I couldn't try these. Um, but just out of sheer curiosity, I tried a spare pair of rods that I had, and lo and behold, it runs absolutely fine. It's a different set of uh, centre pins as well, but um, that's running fine. But put the rods that were on it back on, and it lurches. Um, <laughs> and I cannot see why I can't actually see any difference between these rods. They're exactly the same. It's possible that end pins are slightly bent or, or something. I think that's the only thing I can think of. But it runs absolutely fine with these rods. So got there in the end. So none of that made it onto a video because uh, sometimes when you're doing an awful lot of trial, trial and error like that, it takes a long time. You know, I probably spent you know, a good hour and a half fiddling around with these rods um, trying to figure out why it was lurching. The other thing I think it's doing is uh, wobbling very, very slightly, but you know, a lot of these old models do. Um, it's probably just wear in the uh, in the chassis. Um, the wheels seem straight enough. I don't think that's causing any wobble. But you sometimes just have to make an allowance for that on some of these old models. You know, they're not going to run like a brand new model. So let's get this body on. So there we are, done. Let's go and pull out the shed and see how it goes in the layout. Okay, let's bring it out.
So there we are, that's this old GT3 sorted out. Um, I think this will be the very first GT3 Honda produced, I think, back in the 1970s, so it's probably about 45 years old. Uh, yeah, I thought that was going to be a pretty straightforward job, but uh, there was something very weird going on with those rods. Um, it just would not run as smooth as it should, but I could see, I could see no obvious reason why. Um, maybe that's why the rods got messed with and swapped originally, I don't know. But uh, when I tried to spare set I had, um, it ran absolutely fine. Um, it never ceases to amaze me just how weird uh, model locals can be sometimes. Um, so yeah, there we go, another job done. I'll get this packed up and sent back to Paul. What's next though? Catch us later, folks.